Hi there, vinyl community, and hi there, Robert Z and Aiden Renson. This is a response to your uh, thread about odd titles, uh, crazy titles, bizarre titles, weird titles. Uh, it was a very, very interesting idea for a thread, and a little bit up my alley because I, I. Uh, I said before that I am a huge fan of these kind of songs that makes you wonder what the hell were they thinking about? That makes you laugh because it's so so totally hilariously stupid in some point. Uh, and uh, this was more about the song title, so it was a little bit harder. One of these days I might do a video where I'm showing more odd singles. Uh, but. Uh, this time it was odd titles, but but it was a little close to to uh, what I'm interested in. So uh, uh, I have uh, been trying to uh, dig uh, through my collection, and uh, I picked out some examples of what I feel is pretty odd titles. Even though I am more uh, interested in odd songs, but but this is this is a little little special anyway. So. Let's start it off with one of the most more obvious choices, Crash Test Dummies, and their hit single, summer hit single, mm, 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 mm. I remember when I was listening on the radio charts back in 1994, when this was a hit, the, the radio presenters and then the, the, the one who presented hit charts uh, came up with different kind of ideas how to pronounce this song. It was mm -mm, mm -mm. it was nom 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 nom. It was <coughs> it was all different kind of ideas of how to pronounce this strange title. And uh, I don't know what it is with, with the what was with the nineties and all these tryings to to uh, not saying open what they mean. Uh, with the titles, and uh, because three years earlier, CNC Music Factory, disco group, came up with this: things that makes you go hmm. Uh, uh, and uh, definitely, in my opinion, this is a very very smart title. Actually, it's a song is about that you see strange thing around you, and you thinking hmm. And you see things that makes you go, hmm. It's a very smart title, actually. I really like this. It's uh, kind of genius, actually. Here is another obvious choice. Tutu Coelho, I Eat Cannibals. I Eat Cannibals. You don't want to be a cannibal around these girls. Uh, in 1990, it, it came a song that I fell in love with immediately when I heard it because it was so awesome produced. It led me into uh, starting to listening a lot to modern dance music. I'm talking about a song by KLF, British, very crazy and experimental group. But their song title of their uh, of their breakthrough hit was also a little special. It was a title that uh, made you think actually. It's like, what's the meaning of life? Uh, in this case it was, what time is love? And for all of you Americans, two years later, KLF did a new verse on the song, special, especially for you, with the title, America, what time is love? I'm going to take a couple of Swedish singles now because in Sweden also we had some traditions with uh, having trying to uh, do cool uh, titles that, that is going to make the single sell but uh, years later you're wondering what the hell did they actually mean this is a song that was a hit in 1989 a summer hit uh, by Swedish group Lolita Pop and Lulita Pop can be described as uh, the Swedish version of, uh, of uh, The Pretenders. Uh, in 1989 they had a hit with a song with a title 
Tarzan on a big red scooter. Does this look like Tarzan? Uh, it, it is a great song. It is an awesome song uh, that uh, uh, brings back summer memories to me. So, so I, I'm a huge fan of this song. But the title, a little bit strange. And I don't know what Swedish singer Tommy Nilsson, the singer that sings uh, uh, rock ballads and so on. Call him maybe the Swedish version of Michael Bolton or anything like that. Uh, in 1981, it was years before he had his breakthrough, so this is a hit very early in his career. Uh, in 1981, he released this single with a title that I don't really get it. In the Mean, Mean Times. Sounds logical. Not. Uh, and in the same year, in 1981, uh, Abbas Engineer, uh, 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 Mikael Bietretov and uh, Swedish singer Ted Järnstad released a, an album uh, with a project name uh, Karamba. Uh, I think Carsten Olsen has showed a record with them once. Uh, and uh, Karamba was a band that uh, they had funny names on the band members, faked of course, and uh, they sung in a nonsense language that didn't exist and that of course what was filled with perfect example that album uh, but uh, their biggest hit single which i say the only hit single were a song with a very special title as i said it was sung in a language that didn't exist but check that single out so it's it's a really funny one the song title was haba haba sut sut <laughs> uh, and uh, it's very when you listen to this one you, you can't uh, sit still you, you're digging very hard because it is a very very it's a song like that sits that uh, gets stuck in you like glue when you're listening to it no matter if you're sweet or not uh, during Christmas the same year uh, Karamba also released a Christmas single and of course we're not talking about jingle bells. We're not talking about the ordinary Christmas song here, Oh Holy Night, or something like that. We're talking about a, a Christmas single very inspired by Hare Krishna and these kind of religions. Uh, this uh, single was called uh, Karamba's Yul, Karamba's Christmas. But uh, the song, the, the hit song on this single, were, were had uh, check the sp spelling on the word Christmas here. You're having here Hare Christmas with an E. <laughs> and of course, it was uh, containing all the kind of uh, stuff that was reminding you of India and something and stuff like that. It was a very, very hilariously funny uh, and the kind of uh, silly uh, Christmas song. One of the best Christmas songs I ever heard, uh, have ever heard. Uh, having some. Other examples here on full-length vinyl, We're talking about different album tracks here then. Having here Adam Ant and the album Friend or Foe from 1982. Uh, uh, and uh, this album is uh, famous for the song Goody Two Shoes, awesome great song. Uh, but it also contains a song with the title Crackpot History and the Right to Lie. Okay, it's crystal clear. Uh, and um, an album that I have shown before, and the song that I mentioned before this past summer when I bought it, is this. This is 10CC's marvelous album, Bloody Tourists. And uh, this very uh, odd title. It's called Everything You Wanted to Know About! Exclamation marks. They had to show the, the, the marks and write it out. I think that is, uh, that is a stroke of genius, actually. I think this is a very, very smart idea of a title. And if you want uh, to find interesting titles in pop music, you can go right ahead to this band. 
British indie pop group XTC, uh, whose song titles are filled with, with strange, uh, strange, strange words. Uh, it's a marvelous band. I really like uh, the singer Andy Potridge's voice. A very, very mature and great voice. Uh, but they're having some strange song titles. Having here on their 1985 album, The Big Express, you have having examples like Seagulls Screaming, Kisser, Kisser. <laughs> and you're having your, The Wish You Are I Had. I still don't understand that actual title. Uh, train running low on soul cold. It's a very special and thoughtful thing. And uh, you're having, I bought myself a lyre bird. Uh, Amour on the 1989 album Oranges and Lemons. Highly recommended album. Very, very great with easy indie pop music. Uh, you're having here, um, here comes President Kill again. I don't want to face that president. Uh, poor Skeleton Steps Out. <laughs> uh, Shulk Hills and Children. And uh, a few examples of, of uh, XTC uh, genius, geniuses when it comes to music. And I also checked out the jazz music because that is a, a genre that is very, very interesting when it comes to odd and weird song titles, especially when it comes to, to uh, bebop jazz. Because uh, during the 40s and 50s, many composers uh, did a great, great song, uh, but they didn't think that anyone would care what they called the title, so they just made up a nonsense title because the people are interested in the in the beat anyway. Uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, this is some very interesting uh, tiles here. We're having a Ted Dameron uh, composition on this great live album with Fats Navarro at the Royal Roast. Yes, this is a reissue, but it's great reissue nonetheless. You're having here a title called Ebb Pub. And many of these titles, I might also say, are titles that if you're not a jazz fan and or listens frequently to jazz and know the jazz, how the, the, the jazz musician and the jazz fans are talking and uh, all the uh, expressions that jazz musicians had, you're out of it. You, you, you don't understand one bit. So Ebb Pub, what is that? That is the word bebop spelled backwards. Uh, but it's a uh, let's call it ebb pop. People remember it, but they're interested in the in the beat and the swing anyway. Uh, this is a compilation uh, with bebop, uh, ebb pop, <laughs> with bebop uh, classics that I bought many many years ago. Uh, we're having here a lot of stickers and uh, price tags, but still it's a great double CD. Uh, but he, here we have uh, Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis, Charlie Parker, uh, Art Blakey, Jazz Miles, Jill Cannibal Adderley and so on. And we're having a song by Charlie Parker called Clacked OV Deeds Tiny. I'm having a hard time uh, pronouncing this. Clacked OV Deeds Tiny. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> uh, also some great uh, examples here on this great double CD we fill with also bebop music you having here a song with the uh, Errol Garner trio called White Rose Bounce very easy to make a white rose bounce uh, and you having here a composition by Leonard Feather uh, that here is played by Howard McGee called Mop Mop. Uh, mop Mop. We're very, very, very easy to understand what that is about. And uh, finally here, a compilation with Bebop uh, filled with uh, all of the special classics, mostly with Gillespie and, and Charlie Parker. And you're having here uh, a whole lot of examples. You're having here one with the uh, 
Coleman Hawkins, who also is here. He had a period when he played bebop music. Uh, and you're having here a title called Bean, Re Bean a Rebop. Bean, it is nickname that Colma Hawkins had. Bean a Rebop. And uh, also, if you uh, want some special titles rip that, you, that, that they have ripped of, uh, uh, of a scat song, check out uh, these Gillespie's titles. You're having here, he, he had taken a part of his scat singing. He did a whole lot of scat singing between his trumpet solos. Uh, and he's made a song title of these. You're having here titles like Oop Pop Ada, and you have Oop Bop Shabam. <laughs> total hilariously uh, insane. You're having here a song title called Swedish Swedish Schnapps. Swedish Schnapps. Swedish Schnapps normally is uh, an alcoholic drink in Sweden. Uh, so uh, it's filled with. Jazz history is filled with great, great uh, song titles. I could go on and having another video with just jazz titles, but that's for another story. Uh, Robert C. and Aidan, I hope that you had a great time uh, with this video, and uh, I hope the rest of you also had it. Uh, so uh, until next time, I hope that you have a very nice weekend. And uh, so long, everybody. <laughs>